gets snagged so they can't pull it down. But nobody can get up there to untangle it. I bet somebody didn't pay attention when he was tying it down. A carousel! I think I can turn it on. Do you have any luminaries? I think I can turn this on now. I think you're gonna need to get that beacon working. Hey, has anyone seen the princess puppet? We can't really start the story without her. That sounds like daddy. Darn! Where did I put her? Ah, there she is. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a castle with her father, the king. The king loved her very much because daddies loved their daughters. Unfortunately, the kingdom also had an ogre who was eating travelers because ogres do that. So the king did what kings do and promised that anyone who slew the ogre would get to marry his only daughter, the princess, and become king when he died. The king's lands were very far away and the ogre was very large, so only one knight showed up. His name was Fred, and he fell immediately in love with the princess. Fred was a brave knight, and he marched off the next morning 
singing a brave song as loudly as he could. After several days had passed, the princess got to wondering what had happened to her future husband. So she set off into the forest to look for him. The princess tracked Fred's footprints through a strange wilderness full of Unfortunately, she impaled herself on the bamboo. Wait, that's not what happened. She came to a wide river filled with snapping crocodiles. She couldn't even swim. So what do you think she did? She ran on top of their heads. That's right. It was a magical forest where the plants seemed to know each other. She had to use magic mushrooms to get high or up. to use some bendy tree branches to fling herself across a patch of deadly sharp bamboo. As the sun was setting, she came to the giant ogre's campsite. And there, the princess discovered that the ogre had captured Fred and hung him from a tree as a snack. The ogre did not appreciate visitors at all. Even Fred seemed a little embarrassed to see her. But the princess was a woman of action, and she was nimble, and the ogre was clumsy and easy to taunt. What's a taunt? That's when you make fun of someone. You should never make fun of people, but with ogres, sometimes you have to. And so the princess tricked the ogre and rescued Fred. Fred didn't feel too good about it. He really loved the princess. Fortunately, the king told him about a giant spider that he could slay in order to win the princess's hand. So Fred marched off to the lair of the giant spider, singing a brave song, a little less loudly than before. After several days had passed, the princess got to wondering what had happened to her future husband. So she went off looking for him again. Fred's footprints led her into a dark and creepy cavern, full of strange dripping sounds, kind of like the basement at school. Her footsteps echoed and echoed, until it sounded like someone was following her. Unfortunately, she impaled herself on the bamboo. Wait, that's not what happened! Soon, she came to a vast pit, filled with vicious, deadly spikes. It was much too big to jump over, but far off. She could hear moaning. She thought it might be Fred. So what do you think she did? I know, I know. What? She used an umbrella. What? Like that nanny in that movie. This is the Middle Ages, honey. Where would she get an umbrella? I don't know, but that's what she used. I don't, I, I don't think I have an umbrella. Well, you better find one, because she used an umbrella. Where am I supposed to get an umbrella? Oh, uh, there we go. So, the princess bravely threw herself into the air, slowing her fall using an umbrella. Just like that nanny in the movie. She floated down into the cave, deeper and deeper into the cavern she floated. She thought she could hear Fred moaning, but maybe it was only the wind. Finally, she landed softly, right in a spider's web. Fortunately, it was a very old web, and she was able to break free. Unfortunately, the web was the only thing holding up a giant boulder. 
The princess needed to find somewhere to hide. Suddenly, a giant spider jumped out of the shadows and attacked her. She ran and climbed and jumped and climbed, but the giant spider was very good at climbing too. It had eight legs and the princess only had two. Fortunately, the princess remembered how the webs were holding up boulders. Finally, she found Fred. He was all wrapped up like a present for the giant spider's girlfriend. He was dreadfully embarrassed about having to be rescued again. He really loved the princess. The princess decided he was cute. Fortunately, the king told him about a dragon that he could slay in order to win the princess's hand and stop being so embarrassed. So Fred marched off to the mountaintop of the dragon, singing a brave song, very quietly. After a few days, the princess got to wondering... Why her dad kept trying to give her away? That too. But she was worried about Fred, so she went off to find him. The dragon's mountain was cold, and the wind howled at her to turn back. There were rock slides and fiery chasms. But she was very brave and nimble, just like you. She wasn't going to be put off by a few deadly dangers. Up and up she climbed. When she got cold, she thought about the hot buttered muffin she would make once she got Fred home. Do you still like muffins? Muffins. The princess hoped Fred liked muffins. When the princess got to the lair of the dragon, she was not very surprised to see Fred hanging from the roof of the dragon's cave. So she taunted the dragon until it roared its fiery breath at her. Finally, burning away the ropes that were tying up Fred. And so the princess and Fred lived happily ever after. Fred never had to go on another adventure again, and they had hot buttered muffins every morning. There is another version of the story where the princess flew off on the dragon's back to have a life full of adventures, but that's for another day.
main floor. to shoot it again.
you big squid. Go find a whale to pick on. I bet there's nothing actually broken. I bet it's just something you forgot to turn on. Figures, Daddy bought it. I bet there's just like one thing he forgot to do, and that's why the whole ride isn't working. It's probably in the control room, or the engine room, or something like that. Come on, it's dark out there. How are you gonna climb on shadows if it's dark? Hey, this is that maintenance room I was talking about. Why didn't Daddy do it? I bet he didn't even read the instructions. I think we can restart the whole ride. I knew it. I knew it was something simple. I think all we need to do is pull these levers at the same time. Are you ready? Okay, three, two, one, go. I think we fixed it! I think we fixed the whole thing! came back! Hey! What do you think, Vincenzo? Did you ever consider trying out for the trapeze? They're good at what they do, Mr. Fenris. I'll give you that. I got my balloon back, I got a princess for my puppet theater, and my pirate ship is sailing the bounding man. So you're a man of your word. Go ahead. Count it. It's all there. Need a hand with your stuff? My apparatuses are very delicate, and I don't like anyone in my workshop. 
provide the audience, Mr. Fenris, and I will provide amazement. Mr. Fenris, why are you organizing this circus? I know who your investors are. Well, I promised my wife and daughter I'd clean up my act. But if I don't pull in the crowds for you, those boys are gonna put you in the river. Without Cat and Dee Dee, I wouldn't care much if they did. Ah, oh. so those crowds better come. I didn't talk to him. I didn't talk to Vincenzo. Vincenzo's going to a secret workshop. I can finally talk to him all alone. But where is it? Do you think he would ever take me with him? Vincenzo. You know, when he travels all around the world. Now we go this way. Follow me. Excuse me, mister. Do you know where Mr. Vincenzo's workshop is? Yep. Everybody knows where it is. It's by the big clock tower. You can't miss it. But good luck getting inside. No one's ever been. Thank you. Come on! <laughs> <laughs>